my motorized number 32 meat grinder. Some of the features that I'd like to point out as well as uh, my rationale for for incorporating them in the meat grinder. First thing I was concerned about is the weight. This whole thing weighs about 55 pounds, kind of heavy, so I'd like to disassemble it easily for carrying and washing it. To do that, I bolted the meat grinder onto a hinged three-quarter inch plywood. Got a four inch brass hinge and holding it in place is a latch similar to that on a double hung window. So by loosening the, the latch, swinging the hinge up, it's easy to take the belt off. It's a very simple thing. And it lifts up. take the belt off. Another thing that I did is I put plexiglass on. There's a piece here and a piece here. What this does, it adds, adds a safety feature to keep hands away from the pulley as well as keeping the, the raw meat away from the pulley and the other portion of the meat grinder itself. The motor is a one-half horsepower motor. I've got a switch attached to the motor itself. The motor has a one and a half inch pulley that goes to a five inch pulley. On the same shaft is the five the five inch pulley is a three and three quarter inch pulley that goes up to the twelve inch pulley that came with the meat grinder. In parts of this video you'll see that, that I originally had a one and a half inch pulley instead of the three quarter inch, three and three quarter inch pulley that I have right now. The uh, RPM with the one and a half inch pulley was 64 revolutions per minute. Now with the three and three quarter it's 161 uh, revolutions per minute. It works a heck of a lot better. I'm very pleased with the speed of it. It's still slow enough to be very efficient but fast enough to to grind a lot of meat. You'll see toward the end of the video that I did 10 pounds of pork shoulder in just a little over two minutes. Rather than editing out the part with the one and a half inch pulley, I just thought it would be interesting to show you the difference between the uh, 64 revolutions per minute and the 161 revolutions per minute. I'd like to share with you how I built it. Before heading into the garage, some information about the, uh, the meat grinder. Regarding the cost, you can see the cost is well under $300, and I chose to buy everything brand new, bought most of the material online. Regarding the weight, it was important for me to have this thing easily uh, carried, so uh, that's one of the main reasons why I broke it down. The total weight of the entire unit is 53 pounds. The meat grinder with the pulley weighs 22 pounds. Uh, the pulley itself weighs about 4 or 5 pounds. The half horsepower motor weighs 18 pounds and the platform brackets etc weigh 13 pounds. So there's nothing on this uh, on this meat grinder that weighs more than 18 pounds and it's easily carried. Okay into the garage. Okay here's the platform for our meat grinder. Uh, it's made out of three quarter inch plywood, uh, solid core filled and stained and about four coats of varnish to make it uh, easily cleanable. It measures 14 by 26 and I've got some blocks building it up. Uh, the reason for building it up is to keep the uh, pulleys off of the uh, off of the plywood. 
This one here is three inches thick. I use four pieces of plywood to raise it up three inches and this one is hinged that you'll see later. Three inches high and these two blocks are one and a half inches high. One and a half by six and this is to raise the five inch pulley off of the platform. I put a piece of wood all the way around the bottom about a two by three quarter by two by just to stiffen up the platform a little bit. I'll turn it over and see the other side. There's the other side two inch by all the way around. This doesn't look very pretty but it is. Uh, I got a couple coats of varnish on it to uh, be able to clean this up also. For the motor I bought a one half horsepower motor uh, 1725 RPMs with the resilient base. The base is now mounted to uh, the whole wooden base and I cut some pieces of one inch aluminum so I could tighten it down real good and, and uh, spread the pressure out. The motor mounted to the base. Okay, there's the, uh, the motor in place connected to a 5 inch pulley and then over there's going to be an, there's an inch and a half pulley that's going to connect to the 12 inch pulley of the meat grinder itself. One thing I really like about the, the resilient base you can just take off these two clamps lift the motor up to change the belt although I don't think there's going to be a need for that very often. The, uh, the final RPM of the meat grinder itself will be 64 RPMs. Uh, 1725 motor with an inch and a half pulley up to a 5 inch pulley on the same shaft as an inch and a half pulley to the 12 inch pulley on the grinder when we get that installed we'll bring it down to 64 RPMs. I'll give the formula later. It's kind of simple. Here's the formula for figuring out the final RPM of the meat grinder. The formula is simple. The drive pulley diameter divided by the driven pulley diameter and then you multiply the input RPMs, in this case 1725 from the motor, to the output RPMs. In the, uh, the yellow shaded area, that was our first scenario, where the meat grinder had a output RPM of 64.7. That was a little bit too slow for me so I went from the inch and a half uh, drive pulley to 3.75 or in this case 3.8 inch diameter to end up with our final uh, finished RPM of the meat grinder of 161 revolutions per minute. There's that fourth layer of plywood that is hinged, a four inch hinge, and the meat grinder itself will be bolted to this little door. Got recesses drilled in here to make clearance for the bolts that hold the meat grinder in place. To hold that door in place with the meat grinder attached to it, I bought a, uh, a latch for a double hung window and this opens it up. This relieves pressure on the uh, on the belt to take the grinder off and also holds it securely in place with the latch. Also to remove this to clean it just pull out the pin And it comes right off. Ta-da! There it is with the meat grinder bolted to the door. Flips up.
and down easily. Okay, I thought I'd show you this before I put the auger inside the, the case for the meat grinder. This meat grinder came with a, uh, a three-piece ball bearing setup, which is pretty cool. It'll probably make it last a lot longer. So you got your outer race, then you've got the, the balls, and then the, uh, then the inner race. Instructions with the meat grinder. This is, as I said, uh, number 32 meat grinder. Says to just put some some oil on the bearings or some uh, vegetable shortening for lubrication. And once you start grinding it, but the what I use this thing mostly for is for Polish sausage and Italian sausage. So uh, pork shoulder that's got you know enough fat in it to once you get going and grinding, it's got enough fat in the meat itself to lubricate the bearing and the auger and the inside of the, the, of the uh, grinder. Okay, there she is. So we're going from 1725 RPMs down to 500, down to about 64 RPMs. I want to do a couple things. The shaft that I bought for these two pulleys, for the inch and a half and five inch, I want to grind a flat spot on it so the set screws uh, stay put. Also, I think I want to put some sort of guard to keep hands away from the grinder. i to work on that next. What I decided to do for the safety guard was to uh, install a couple pieces of easily removable uh, plexiglass. So I added these blocks. One here and one here. They'll clear the meat grinder and just one screw will hold each one of them in. It's uh, obviously some caution has to be use when moving when using this but uh, this should add a pretty good layer of protection. There's our plastic plexiglass guards installed. So this will be the food side of the meat grinder where all the food is going to go and hopefully it'll provide some nice protection hopefully it won't be needed I, I drilled this hole off-centered so that we can still tilt this up enough to get the the drive belt on the 12 inch pole. Right on the motor. Okay, so there's our meat guard, our 
plexiglass guards are in, and now it's time to install our pulley and belts and start grinding the meat. Kind of exciting, this is the first time we're using this. So I made sure I checked the inside, all the parts, made sure they were clean. I ran a file over any uh, any rough edges, any sharp edges, and then I scrubbed the entire inside with a scuffing pad. Okay, this shows the belt is actually fairly easy to put on with this hinge. There, that's it. Okay, a different view of putting the belt on using our hinge. And as I explained earlier, I uh, offset, cut, drill the offset hole on our plexiglass to allow the meat grinder to be lifted up and locked into place, ready to go. It's plugged in, so let's give it a try. Okay, some of the things that I'd like to just go over that makes me excited about my particular version. There's probably many versions of grinders like this, but this is this is uh, our our features that I'm excited about. The plexiglass as some sort of a safety feature and a cleanliness feature, keeping the meat away from the rest of the grinder. Our brass hinge. Our, we've got a latch over here to unlock our grinder. The grinder comes up and down to put the belt on and off to replace the belt, but also when we're all done, we take the belt off, take the pin out of our four inch hinge, and the whole grinder comes up to be disassembled and washed good. There's extra varnish, urethane varnish on this piece of wood that the, the, the meat grinder is bolted to. I don't even have to take the four bolts out of the grinder. Okay, now we're ready to start some grinding some meat. Okay, here's our 10 pounds of chuck that we're going to try. Chuck roast. Uh, a little hint from, uh, I've had some experience with meat grinders, uh, mostly a smaller food grinder, to cut the pieces up into maybe one inch cubes, inch and a half inch cubes. That way, if there's any sinew, it won't be any longer than that. Uh, it should be cool, very cold actually. And also, it's like, uh, you know how you, and a chainsaw, when you're using a chainsaw and the big chunks don't come out anymore, something's wrong. If you see the meat coming out in mush, that might be that there's sinew tied up on the, the cutting blade. Just takes a few seconds to take the plate off, clean the sinew out, put it back in, you're into nice solid chunks of meat instead of mush. Okay, here we go. My main objective for building this was to save on the shoulder and the arm and money. I, the cost on this is not very much. It's about $300. That's a heck of a lot cheaper than a, than a, than a number 32 electric grinder that you can buy. Right now we're doing ground beef for hamburgers. Uh, we've got 10 pounds of chuck. But the primary purpose of buying this is uh, once a year, and you might turn into twice a year, we do about 120 to 130 pounds of polo sausage. I live in California, it's hard to find anybody to grind pork butts using the chili grind because they all say, well, we can't do it because of cross contamination, they took our plates away from this, it was being a real chore just to get ground pork. So we decided let's just do our own. It's a lot easier. We can we did find a place where we could buy boneless pork shoulder. So that's a lot of work right there. We just bring it home, we cube it and grind it and stuff it and put it in our smoker and that'll be another video, our really cool 
sausage smoker or any type of uh, meat smoker. Well, here we are one week later, one week after our first grind, which came out really well. But I was somewhat disappointed by the speed of the grind. So I changed out the smaller pulley. This used to be a one and a half inch pulley. I changed it out to a three and three quarter inch pulley and that required a, buying a new belt also. The one and a half inch pulley gave us 64 revolutions per minute. It worked okay, but it was kind of slow. So the three and three quarter inch pulley increased the speed from 64 revolutions per minute to 161 RPM. It works out really well. The pulley that I bought is an adjustable pulley. By loosening this set screw and turning this half of the pulley counterclockwise, it increases the uh, distance between the two sides of the pulley and also decreases the uh, diameter of the pulley. That's a very cool thing. Works out real good for, for uh, putting a belt on, making sure you have proper tension on the belt. So now, last week we ground 10 pounds of chuck. Today we're going to grind 10 pounds of pork shoulder meat. Pork shoulder, pork butt is what we use to make our Polish sausage and Italian sausage and uh, meatloaf, etc. So here we go. Let's give it a try. This time we've got pork shoulder, 10 pounds of uh, pork butt, pork shoulder roast that I cut into cubes, about an inch and a half cube. Works real good even though the meat grinder is plenty strong enough to take strips in. When you put, take strips in, the sinew wraps around the back of the knife and you end up pushing mush through the holes instead of nice meat cut. So here we go. I'm putting three to five cubes in at a time and it's working just great. up on the meat grinder, take the belt off, one bolt off for the big pulley, and knock the, uh, the pin out of our hinge, and take it over to the sink and wash it up. That's it. <laughs> 